Good evening. My name is Noel and welcome to a brand new Jump In Bible Study series called Committed to Community. Well, we want to be with other people. We want to love and be loved. And we know what real relationships make our lives better. But being a part of a community always ends up being harder than we thought. This four-part Bible study will show you how the Holy Spirit molds diverse kinds of people into a Christ-centered community that you know shows the world Jesus. It's an honor and privilege to start this new series by talking about how we were all created for community. Now, we all desire to be a part of community. God never intended for any of us to be alone in life. Whatever your person, personality type is, introvert, extrovert, socially adept, or socially awkward, your soul yearns for meaningful relationships with other people. We want to know and be known by others. We cherish friendships that allow us to be ourselves. Even if some of us have never encountered this type of community and others have been profoundly damaged by relationships, we all yearn for deep, true, real connection. But how do we get here? How do we get this? How do we get hardwired with this need? this longing? Well, the Bible gives an answer to this question by saying that we are made in God's image. God made us for fellowship. Now, the doctrine of the Trinity is one of the oldest and most treasured beliefs in historic Christian theology. The Trinity shows that God himself is part of a group. More accurately, God is community. Now, there is only one God, but there are three people who make up God before all the worlds, which means before there was any kind of human community, God lived in perfect, loving harmony in His three persons. God, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. In the biblical account of creation, this triune God says, let us make man in our image. This is found in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. Human beings are made to God's image to reflect His likeness. That's why our longing for community seems, seems so deep and primal. It's how we were made as God's image bearers. So if community is something we all want, if it's part of being made in God's image, then what makes it so hard to attain? What keeps us from achieving the type of meaningful human relationships that God has wired for us? If you think for a moment about the nature of your relationships, you'll quickly see that there is something darker and more sinister than your God-given desire for community. It's the tendency to use other people to get what you want. It's easy to see how often we only care about ourselves, looking out for our own best interests and avoiding people and relationships that will ask too much of us. Think about the times you have avoided someone on purpose because they bothered you, or the times you said what people want to hear to avoid offending them, or the times you have given up on certain friends because they were no longer useful to you. Or what about the times you stayed in a bad or unhealthy relationship just to stop feeling alone? Sin is what the Bible calls the fact that we are selfish. Now, when we hear the word sin, we usually think of doing something wrong. But sin is deeper than external actions. The Bible often talks about sin in terms of not believing. In other words, instead of believing what is true, we believe lies which obviously leads to bad behavior, attitude and bad feelings. The first sin started with disbelief. Eve believed the serpent's lie about God and what God wanted from them. He, he told them this, this most famous lie, what? You will definitely not die, for God knows that if you eat it, your eyes will be open and you will become like God. You can find this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 4 to 5. Unbelief is not seeing and believing what is true about God. The world and us. It means not taking God at His word, not trusting in His promises, and not believing He is good. Furthermore, the effects of sin is, is that it prevents us from believing without the help of Christ. Sin has made us turn in on ourselves and change how we relate with each other. We need someone who can save us from our lack of faith and selfishness and give us back the ability to be a part of a real, deep, long-lasting community. We are also redeemed for community. 
we are redeemed for community, right? Redemption that God, Jesus, everything He did for us is so that we could be a part of a community, right? And here is where we meet the good news of the gospel. Now, the gospel means good news, right? In English, it is a message, a proclamation, or an announcement. And one of the strange things about this message is that it starts with bad news that we are sinful, broken people. We have turned our backs on God. We get stuck in lies and, and the worship of ourselves. We look to things other than God for our identity and meaning. Now, we can't free ourselves, make God happy, or do enough good things to make up for what we have done wrong. But God has a lot of mercy. He sent Jesus just for that, as a substitute for all of us. Jesus lived his life as if he were us. He obeyed God completely and worshipped him fully, which we didn't do. In fact, even Jesus had his own community. Everywhere he went, he had his apostles, his disciples with him. In his death, Jesus substituted himself for us by paying the penalty we owed God for our sin and unbelief. If we are humble, we admit we need him and turn to him. God, the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit will apply Jesus' work as a substitute to us by faith. The Bible calls this redemption, which means to be freed, brought back, or set free. What does Jesus free us from? Sin and everything it can do. Why does Jesus buy us back? So that we can have a life that looks like God and shows the world how good He is. In other words, one of the most important things that Jesus does when He saves us is to restore our ability to be in a community. Not for a group of people who look and act like they say the same things, but for a group of people from every tribe, every race, having different languages and all the countries of the world. You can find this in Revelation chapter verse 9. It's Revelation 7 verse 9. God made us for community and Jesus saved us so that we can be in community. By doing this, He has made us into His own body. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 7 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 27 which means, which says you can live, love and share His good news with our friends and neighbours. But wait, if Jesus saves us for community, why is it still so hard to be in community? Why are relationships still broken even among Christians? This is the tension we live with. While Jesus has freed us from sin's power and punishment, He has not yet conquered it. It's still around. Sin is always with us. We often don't believe it. We often forget the good news of the gospel and go back to telling lies and worshipping of ourselves. Because of this, the Bible tells us not only to accept the gospel, but to stand in it. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1. And also to continue in it, which you can find in Colossians chapter 1, verse 23. In other words, constructing and appreciating a healthy community will necessitate our belief in the gospel that what Jesus did for us has force and significance in our relationships with God and others. This is something we must pay attention to on purpose. It means figuring out what's in our hearts. We don't believe which makes it hard for us to love and serve others. And to receive love from others. It means getting the healing, freeing the truth in a way that lets us see deep into our souls. And can you guess where this work of change is going on? Yes, in a community. So how does being a part of a community change us? Did you ever notice how patient you can be if no one gets on your nerves? Or how loving you are if people around you are easy to love? Or how humble you are if people like and respect you? We are all saints when we are alone. But in a community, our weaknesses, flaws and sins are shown for what they really are. Because of this, community is not optional for change. It is necessary. We can't grow into the people God wants us to be if we are alone. You can't stop the story of redemption. You can't stop it at all. God is preparing us for a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness lives. You can find this in 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 13. His goal is a new world where people like you and me who have been saved live in perfect peace with each other and with our Creator. God wants to get His people ready for a glorious future by changing them now. 
this is what the Bible calls sanctification. The agent of sanctification is the Holy Spirit. The tool of sanctification is the gospel. Community is a sanctification is a setting for that sanctification. Think about some of the times the Bible says one another. Love each other like brothers. Show more respect than the other person. Romans 12 verse 10. Make each other happy, agree with each other, and live in peace. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. Don't let your freedom give you a chance to be selfish. Instead, serve each other out of love. Galatians 5, verse 13. Be kind to each other. Have soft hearts and forgive each other. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32. Don't we all know that we can't do all these things perfectly? These commands aren't just given so that we know what to do. They're also given so that we can try, fail, and learn more about God's grace. Try to follow these one other commands found in those verses I just shared. This will show us our sin. It reveals our sins to us, brings us to Jesus in repentance and faith, and makes us rely on the Holy Spirit to change us. And the best part is, in a community, a community, a connect group, a small group, church, this is the place where we will learn to depend on God's grace and experience the power of the gospel to change us. Community is also the main setting for our church's missions, which is our focus on the outside world as Christians. God wants us to use our communities, no matter how messy or broken they are, to draw others to His story and to introduce them to Jesus, the Redeemer. It's not just about us becoming more like Jesus, it's also about people who don't know Jesus coming to know Him as a Saviour and their Lord. We sometimes treat community like a safety net under a tightrope walker. It's a good thing to have in case something bad happens, right? But the Bible talks about community as if it's the tightrope itself. You can't move forward without it. We are created for community, all of us. We are redeemed for community and we are transformed in community. And that community is the community that you chose to be a part of, our church. When you come on a Sunday to worship with a group of people, that's a community of believers. Worshipping our one God, the God that we love so much. When you meet together in connect groups or prayer meetings, we're coming together as a community of believers, faith-filled, hungry, and we are all here to support each other despite our weaknesses, despite the circumstances where we came from. That is what a church community is all about. Simply put, the gospel becomes real in the lives of Christians when we gather together in community. It shows how Christians should live together in Christ. And it gives us the strength to follow God's will and to do what He has commanded. Not on that. It reveals God's might to the whole world. This is so important. Community is not something to be afraid of, but something to welcome. And look, you know, sometimes we are afraid. Community just like relationships, right? Sometimes you want to step into a relationship, we are afraid of being rejected. But let me assure you, being a part of community, there aren't any more risk than of what it takes to follow Jesus. No, nothing. It's so easy. And the beauty, the prize, is that you will enter into a life that God intended it to be lived from the very beginning. How can anyone refuse such an offer? As you break into your groups, discuss these following questions. I'm keeping it simple. Just one, right? But I hope it will spur some interesting conversations among your groups. What keeps us from achieving the type of meaningful relationships that God has wired us for? Right? Discuss it. it you know, be, don't be afraid to be open. Don't be afraid to put your heart on your sleeve. Because it is then when we learn and we discuss and we learn from the experiences and the insight of others, we learn then how we should be moving ourselves and, and, and carrying ourselves in a faith-filled or like-minded community. If you found this lesson interesting and helpful, oh, be sure to join us again on March 17 for part two of our Committed to Community series.
Pastor Stella will be taking that message and I'm, I assure you it's going to be a real powerful one. Right? Have a blessed time until we meet again. Goodbye.